Hey, Coach, has got a fantastic guest tonight. Garrett Wingate is the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach at Aiden Griffin High School in North Carolina. Uh, Garrett has just put out a new coach tube course uh, called the Power Raid Offense. And uh, uh, Garrett is a 16-year veteran, and uh, he runs a heck of an offense. And he's going to come on tonight and, and teach us uh, package plays, a, a package play concept where you make one call and you get three plays out of it. And uh, buddy, I'm excited to, to to see you teach this thing, and I and I've uh, and I, I I'm super excited about your course. I know you uh, really put a lot of work into it, and uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But go ahead and coach us up on on how you do this package in three plays into one. One. Yeah, call. coach. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me again. Um, so I'll share this real quick just to um, hopefully make a little bit more sense here. Can you see it? You good? Yep. All right, cool. So I'm um, just just talking about packaging a play. So you know, in the offense that I run, it's it's not true 100% air raid. It's not true 100% power downhill football. It's it's a mix of both. And and what we do is we're using a lot of different things to accomplish the same goal. But it's really very simple to us. So uh, what I do believe is when you mix power downhill football, you know, you're mixing gap counter schemes with inside zone and outside zone pin and pull methods. When you're doing all this stuff you can get into a habit of just calling plays. Like you're just, okay, well, let's run counter here. Oh, well, let's just run power now. Okay, well, now let's throw it. I like to have a reason why you do what you do. So number one is I, I believe you do not want to get into a habit of just calling plays. Make sure that what you're calling, there is a system, there is a scheme. And when you're putting all these things together, make sure there's a reason why. Okay, so uh, we're going to marry our runs to our passes. Our passes are going to make sure they marry with our runs. That's going to build our play action. Um, I'm a little bit different when it comes to RPOs. Yes, there are some RPOs, but if I'm ever going to RPO, it's definitely going to be off a quick game and some type of short, quick run concept. Anything that's going to be play action is going to be built off of drop back passes. So that's where I'm a little bit different than most people. But we want to marry plays that lead to more success. So if I know I'm going to run counter, I know I'm going to have a screen off a of counter. I know I'm going to have a quick action uh, RPO off a of counter. So all these things are going to build in and they're going to look the same, but to our quarterback and to our players, it's really just the same play. It's just a little tag to it. So we really like if then scenarios. So what I'm going to use tonight is how we use our bubble screen, which is um, a now screen and a slow screen put together. And then how we combine that with Y corner. And then how you can combine that with, uh, you know, 94 Y cell. So how do all these things work together? And to us, it's really just we can call it three different plays, but we know it goes together. So we're looking for something different in each one. Um, now, the reason why I do this, so I was at uh, J.H. Rose three years ago, then Northern Nash last year, now at Aiden Grifton. So uh, the past two years, I was at high schools that had, you know, exceptional athletes, um, very good when it comes to football knowledge, understanding what to do. They can go through progressions. They could do all these things. Uh, now going back to Aiden Grifton, kind of rebuilding a program not as football literate, don't know as much. So you're starting over, you're starting brand new. So how can you still run the same type of offense with kids who have never done this? Okay. They've never ran a spread offense, really. They don't understand the things that you really want to know in a spread offense. And then you try to teach these things and how do you put it all together to make it very simple for them? Okay. And so I think you take the three plays that you know you run and you package them together and you as the offense coordinator are looking for certain things and when you see those things, you can call those certain plays. To the kids, it looks like the same thing. To a defense, it looks the same, but it's actually a little bit different. Okay. So um, let's see here. Let's get out of that. And let's give you an example of what I'm talking about first. All right. Still good on the screen? Yep. Looks great. Perfect. Okay. Just making sure. All right. So we'll go over. Uh, first one would be uh, trips to the right early. We're going to run 83, which for me is a... Now screen to the play side, and so the back going to have a backside jail break on the backside. Okay. Um. Now, when I'm coaching this play, uh, do you, do you think you're in a, a diagram right now? Yes, I am. Can you see it? No, it's it's the right. first one. Got it. Let me share it. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> what I'm saying is. So when we call our screen packages, uh, our screens to us are always the same. We're always going to have a quick screen uh, field side or other side. And on the back side, we're going to have a backside jailbreak. 
So it looks like a run, you know, to linebackers. To the outside skill guys, it looks like a, a bubble or something else. That that type of concept is happening. And so when we coach this, we're coaching certain things. Like uh, we're telling our quarterback to look for certain keys. And in those certain keys, you know, if they're open, if the quick screen is open, like here in this situation, it's going to be open. The corner is pressed off. The free safety is over here. Um, you know, the Sam linebackers in the face of the wild trying to take away stick. All these things are happening. So we, I know, and my quarterback knows, as soon as this ball snap, I can throw this bubble screen, no problem. Okay. And we'll go through our game plan that week. And we really just focus on this one play. And then we go through if then scenarios. So we'll say if, okay, I want you to think about this. Who's the guy that's probably going to move in this defense if we start throwing bubble screen and throw it really good? Okay. Well, this other linebacker, this J linebacker is going to come over and cover the H. That's exactly right. Then what's going to be wide open? Backside jailbreak probably. That's right. So look at those things. As they cover and they put four over three, can you throw the now screen? Probably not. Okay, so what do you do? Backside jailbreak. Okay, good. If they take away that and we are not successful at that, what's your next role? <clears throat> we're going to call that that other play that you call, Coach. That's right. So now we're going to run wide corner behind it. Okay, and I got some video film for you to show you like through the course of a game how we do it. But just telling the quarterback, it's like, hey, look, this is where we're going to start. So where we want to start, number one, is with our most highest percentage play. What's our highest percentage play? Bubble screen. Always has been, always will be for us. It's a bang home. We got to be like 94% on this play. Completion, catch, gain of four yards. It has to be 94%. And so if we're doing that, we're gaining four yards every single play. Okay, now if we're doing that, and I'm not going to stop calling it until they stop it. Now, once they stop it, then we go to the next part, the next package. Okay, and then all that is for us um, in this situation, I'm going to skip one. All right, here's the next one that we would call in the series. So now the next one's going to go to Y corner. Okay, so now what do we have? We still have the same bubble action. All right, the Z so this is what I always tell my receivers. I want everything to look like a vertical until it is not. So here, you can coach it up however you want to. Um, sometimes I coach it that the Y, I want you to almost give them a shutter step when you get to the salmon to make it look like screen and then release them Y corner. Z, I want you to run that read slant. Reading the Sam linebackers, the same thing. But there's really nobody on you, so you don't have to fake anything that you're doing. Um, push vertical, find your read slant, get in your hole, sit where you need to be. Okay, on the backside, I like to change this up a little bit on that backside guy. What is he doing? We can do a backside hunt concept, uh, roll dig. I really like roll dig right now. I haven't ran it that much last year. Just didn't trust my receivers that much. But honestly, I love the roll dig concept because what will happen is after we run this play and now the J comes over here, now you have backside slant if you want it. You can change that open access route by the X. But what happens is different things start to happen. And as you're calling this play, okay, now you've ran bubble screen. They're trying to cover that, and they feel they're pretty good at coming down on the H. They're taking that away. Okay, cool. Now the corner's pressed up a little bit because we've been throwing it to our second read, which is our read slant. Okay, so now this Mike linebacker is trying to jump out, and he's jumping out of the box. And this is what we get all the time. <laughs> so this Sam linebacker will automatically take off on bubble, the free safety and corner kind of bail out here on the corner. And this Mike linebacker jumps out to the read slant. And that's how people are starting to cover it. So then what we do, same play, same kind of look, same everything. We just call Y corner plus one. All that means to us is now that our tailback is going to replace where the middle linebacker was. Because a lot of times this X receiver just occupies these three guys. And then if they move this guy over, that's totally fine, too, because now he's still occupying, too. So we just replace this area because this Mike linebacker, as soon as he sees this, he will bail so hard because he's seen bubble screen after bubble screen, and then he's seen the Z catch the ball, and now he's bailing extra hard because he's been told, you got to get over there and take care of that. And then sometimes we'll just change the Y to a slot fade. Hey, I want you to do the same exact thing. It's just a true clear-out route, okay? So just clear it out with a slot fade, and that's just an in-game decision. Uh, we know we're not going to throw the corner. Like, it, it's covered. We look over there pre-snap. There's two people over there. We're not throwing it. So now we just go through our progression. You know, now here's two, three, four, five in our progression. And so that's how we take that same play 
and I don't have film of this one specifically, but we used to do this all the time. How, if you want a drop back concept in it now, so now you've had a screen, you've had, you can put a, a run in front of all of it. So now you have kind of an RPO uh, or a play action. And now you've had a Y corner, and now you can put a drop back game progression in it, a 90 series, and it's the same kind of look. So yes, I know it's different than most YSL, but hey, how do I get the same look with the same formation, the same everything, and do something a little bit different? Okay, so put the H on the bubble. Now we're running 94. So read number one is, is vertical. Number two, uh, sometimes I'll change this into a more of a banana instead of a tin tail, just trying to mix it up. This H will run that bubble like always, and we just go through the progression. If this might linebacker jumps out all the time, just run YSL plus one. He replaces right here in the middle. So uh, for my quarterback, as far as progression-wise, this play will always be outside, well, to the trips, to the backside. So my quarterback, it's simple to him. It's just like progression. Okay, if I throw the quick screen, is it open? Yes, I throw it. Okay, is the quick screen covered? All right, I throw backside jailbreak. All right, now we go to Y corner. Okay, I look, is the corner going to be covered? Yes. So now I just read short. And so it just goes, helps him through his progression. Where we've only ran, you know, these three or four plays, but to him, it's all about the same thing. All right. So let's go through one of uh, the game films this year. So this is at my new school this year, Aiden Grifton. Um, trying to teach these kids, you know, how to run the game, how to run the ball, how to do everything, how to do everything the right way. So I want to show you the real stuff. You know, you have a team that hasn't ran this offense before. Okay. Um, you know, you have a quarterback who played quarterback last year, um, but played half the season. This kid played outside receiver at X-Force, but uh, he didn't play a lot last year. Um, this kid was a senior who never played football, and he finally figured it out week four. He could be a very good football player. Outside receiver, didn't really play. He's a junior. And so you have all these kids who didn't really play a lot of football. And so I think it's more of a true, I could show, put, just put athletes up here and show you how it works, but I want to show you, okay, the team we're playing is, um, I think they finished second in the conference or tied for first in the conference in ours. So this is a very good team that went to the third round of the playoffs. So you're playing very good competition. Uh, we won three games this year, had a chance to win five, and this team didn't win a game last year. So it's like, I want to show you how you can take something very simple with, with not great athletes. We're just, we don't have great athletes. And how you can progress and use this concept and become effective. All right, so the first one we have, <clears throat> that's just a little 618 stick. Terrible read by the quarterback. So let's pause. <laughs> All right, so what I've noticed is watching film against these guys. If I go trips to the boundary, which is almost a, you never do it, but if I do that, you know, their alignment gets so messed up as far as the defense goes. So the first time I call Y corner, all right, there's the bubble. And we'll mix our receivers up. Like our receivers know our concepts in one way so that that defense can't key on that H always doing the bubble is I'll mix the Y and the H up. I mean, they know what they're doing. And so sometimes I'll just flip them up and say, hey, y'all two switch, run the routes. And they know what that means because we only run but so many. So now we're running the same play. Quarterback's going through his progressions. There's the bubble. And there's our read slant. Um, and it's just we're looking what I'm looking at is what is that outside linebacker doing? You know, where is he going? Where is he bailing? He's not really doing much of anything to me as far as covering goes, but I'm really looking at where's that Mike linebacker because this is an even front defense. So where's the Mike linebacker? Where is he going? Okay, has he, has he jumped out there really hard yet? Is the bubble there if we call this play next time? Absolutely. Reed slants there. Okay, what's the only thing that's not there? Okay, Y corner or vertical? Okay, cool. So I'm just taking little mental notes as I go through this. All right, so we have um, our next series, and we're passing the ball. Okay, so I've known in my head, okay, if I go field side, I definitely have screen. Okay, so we see it. It's there. There's the bubble. Okay, we throw it, and we just get it out. The quarterback knows I got this because of just numbers. Where's the free safety? He's all the way on the other hash. Okay, so we got it. Go ahead and throw the bubble. This guy is not a problem. He's not an issue. Catch it, throw it. Okay. It's out there. Got rid of it. What am I watching? Where's the middle linebacker? What's he doing during this play? Okay. He is bailing already. 
he's out there. Okay, so now the middle linebacker wants to get involved in the um in the pass game. All right, so let's stay in the same type of concept. All right, so now we're going to go to the other side. Okay, same bubble screen. Oh, there we go. Same bubble screen. We know we're going to throw it. We have numbers. It looks good. Throw it. Now, I want to say what if, okay, what if, and we just didn't have to do this in this game. You know, what if, let me get this out of here. What if this guy or one of these guys jumped out and now they're really trying to cover bubble screen? So this outside linebacker, that Jay I was talking about, what if he's over here now? And now they have three over three because the free safety is so worried about verticals, he's way back. Okay, that's fine. What I would tell my quarterback is if it is covered, where do we go? Backside jailbreak. Okay, and we didn't have to throw it because we were so successful on the bubble. But look at the backside jailbreak. We have one, two, three, and here he is. Okay, so we have that also set in that, you know, if that gets covered and it doesn't look good, throw the backside jailbreak. And that backside jailbreak would have been wide open. Okay, that's probably a touchdown. But I did not have a problem with getting what they were giving us. That's a gain of five. I'm going to take that every single day. Okay. All right, let's move on. All right, now, what I've noticed is that that middle linebacker, when I'm throwing them bubbles, setting them up, that he wants to jump outside extremely hard. All right, now... This is still Y corner to us, but I did some tagging, okay? So don't get too lost in the, well, that doesn't look like Y corner. I know, I tagged some stuff. I put my running back out here, but he's still running plus one, okay? So he's now going to replace in the middle. So these linebackers are jumping out now. All right, now what's the only difference? We don't have a bubble here, but everything else kind of plays off the same look. Okay, we still have a read slant, kind of, sort of. We still have, I know it's ugly, but it's still the plus one concept. So we're looking for the plus one. Middle linebacker jumps out. He's taking the Y. Okay, and all we're doing is replacing where we're mess messing with that guy's eyes. So to us, it's just, we're calling that Y corner. I tagged the Y on something a little bit different. Number two, supposed to have a read slant. He doesn't run it great. That's absolutely terrible. But this is what I'm showing. I mean, you got new kids who are trying to do this. So he's going way too deep. He's not breaking off where he's supposed to break off. He's supposed to be right here. But that's the thing. He's supposed to be right there because it messes with him. And we're just doing replace one. Now, if he had caught that, he still could have got more yards. Everything was great. Okay. So we're using that same look, that same type of play. <laughs> and getting that. All right, so uh, this is second quarter. All right, still doing the same thing. So now we're running counter up front. So we're running counter and that bubble screen on the backside. Okay, now one thing I'll notice is that if you do call a run this way, you just got to know that there's no backside jailbreak as the quarterback. Now, can you run that? Yeah, I tried it this year. It was hideous, but you can run counter and release and still have a backside jailbreak if you want it. But for these kids, it was just a little bit too advanced. We weren't ready for that yet. You can do it, and you see how these guys are releasing. You would just put the backside jailbreak underneath it, but we just weren't there yet. So on this play, we are running the counter, backside bubble. We see numbers before the snap, so we know we're throwing it. Okay? So my quarterback, he knows before the snap even happens. Okay, there's two. This guy's the problem. Do we have leverage on him? Yes. Throw the ball. I don't even want you to think about what else could happen. Just throw it. Play fake. He doesn't really know what to do yet. Okay? Nice and simple. All right, we catch the ball. It could be done better. Absolutely. But it's a gain of seven or gain of six. We're totally fine with that. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so now we come right back. It's fourth and one. Same series that we were just doing. Fourth and one. We've been running bubble after bubble after bubble. Okay, now, what are they trying to take away? Now they're trying to take away the bubble. Look at the leverage of the outside linebacker. Now he's outside to meet it. Okay, that's great. Perfect. So now we go to Y corner. All right, so I want you to think about Y corner. Quarterback knows. Okay, I can't throw it deep. Where's my progression? Number two, where's my Z receiver? There's my window. Okay, so we're using that same look to mess with the defense. Where's that middle linebacker? Starting to try to jump a little bit, but he quits running. 
Okay, and that's what I'm watching too. And what do we run here? Replace one. It's really replace one. My back just happened to have a free release because nobody blitzed on that play. Okay, so what he's doing is replacing one. So he's doing just enough to hold up that Mike linebacker from jumping out because he knows he can't jump out. And so that was a fourth and one play where we're running that same concept, that same look. And to us, you know, it's kind of the same thing over and over and over again. Defense it looks different. <clears throat> That's just more verts. Um, coming right back to wide corner. We liked it last time, fourth and one. We're going to run it again. Um, got sacked, let up pressure. Yep, there's the middle linebacker. So what should we have done? We're five wide. Quarterback's got to know we can only handle five. That's your hot route. Throw it to 32 right now. You know, that's our hot receiver in this play. Throw it now. If he had caught it and thrown it when he was supposed to, right now, he's looking at him. I mean, he's right there. Just throw the ball. Get rid of it. Um, We've been right where we need to be. All right. Let's see here. Just a couple more. Not much. We were all discombobulated. Who knows what that was? Going back to wide corner. Um, Same play. And what do we do wrong here? Okay, this is what I like showing. You know, you're you're dealing with young athletes who aren't really sure. We're running the same play we ran all night. What are they taking away? Deep. No doubt about it. We're taking away deep. Okay. We go through our reads. One is covered. Two is here. Three is here. I'd like to go ahead and see us throw it to three right now. I mean, he's out here. This guy's just outside the hash. Quarterback hesitated. If we had thrown it like we're supposed to and go through our progressions like we're supposed to, I would definitely take that all day long. Okay? But we throw it, we throw an interception. Okay? But it's that same thing where were we open? Yes. Was that defense doing stuff that they probably weren't supposed to be doing or they were getting out of their base defense? Yes. So we're making that defense adjust to us. They try to go too high safety. Okay? And they're not a too high safety team, so they're trying to change who they are to adapt for us. Okay, and it's fine. These guys are dropping back 13 yards off the ball. Okay, so we're getting them right where we want them. But we just got to go through our progressions and do what we do. Like, I mean, here's a good example. Like, the defensive end is almost trying to get in pass coverage. You know, so we got them right where we want them. We're just happening to make bad plays. Okay, but we're sticking with that same thing. <laughs> um. This is just our basic play. Like, if I see grass here, we're throwing stick. I mean, it's wide open. Um, so we're going to take that. But that's just a different concept. Um, we run six, which is four verts. Um, bad pass. We make a good play, but not where we should have went. And um, just real quick, there's one last thing I'll show you. Because it's, it's more of the same stuff over and over again. Um, but <clears throat> one last thing I got. We always like to have one little wrinkle in those uh, those three concepts we talk about. Okay, so we got bubble, we got wide corner. What wrinkle can we put in those that this week for this team to cause a problem? Okay, well, what we drew up that week was, what if we run wide corner, but we put a tunnel screen in front of it? Okay, I like it. How do we do that? Well, release the lineman, send the uh, Z on his read slant, but tell him to keep on running. Don't stop and run a tunnel in front. Okay, perfect. Now, the only difference was we changed where the uh, Z was, so we put him inside. The Y, we put him the furthest inside, we put the Z in the middle, and then we put the bubble guy on the outside. Okay, so we changed the route just a little bit, but it was just for this play. So it was a special play. So we're still calling the read slant, and now we catch it over the middle, and it just turns into a tunnel screen for us. Now, why do that instead of just calling tunnel screen? You're dealing with kids that really don't know football. So to us, it was just Y corner tunnel. And they knew, oh, okay, so it's the same thing. I just catch it over the middle. Absolutely right. Keep it simple. Keep it stupid. Dealing with kids that don't know a lot. And we knew we called, and this is a little tidbit, always call a screen when you know they're going to blitz. If you do that, you can't go wrong. So we knew they wanted to blitz. They're blitzing this guy from the field side. He trips and messes up. But, you know, we're right where we want to be in that. And then I think... More of the same stuff, yeah. More of the same stuff, but um, just real quick, that that's how you take all those things, and um, you know, just put them all together and make it very simple, especially with dealing with a team that's new, hadn't done it very much. Um, I would always say, 
you know, find a run that you really like, find a quick game pass you really like, find a screen you really like. Now, how do you put all of those things together? Then add a drop back. Then add a special play. Okay, when you put all those together, you got five plays. Multiple formations, it looks like 30 different things to the defense. But to you and your kids, it's the same exact thing. I love That's it, buddy. Part. Yep. I love it. Let me let me put you on the spot. Well, I didn't tell you about this ahead of time, but I I love your uh, jailbreak to the single receiver side. Do mm -hmm. you have any other clips of that throwing that? You had the Absolutely. one you didn't throw, and it would have been a touchdown. Absolutely. Let me. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. Let me look at the offense, and then so I got to look at my whole stuff here. I've never done that before, but I, you just sold me on that one. He didn't throw it, but if he would have. He did not throw you know, it. Now, to the house. Absolutely. Um, now, I don't know. It looks terrible, and I, I'll find you better film. Um, okay, so. All right, and I know I need to share the screen here, so let's share that back up. All right, and share. All right, you got it? Yep. Okay. So I'm going to show you the ones that we did throw. Okay. Now we got – all right, so this is one of the, the backside jailbreaks I was telling you about. Now, so we threw this one on second and 18. Well, I guess everybody knows when a second alone you're going to see a screen, right? So we were throwing screen <clears throat> off a counter. So what we're doing here is we're running counter up front. All right, pause. See how our three guys go down, right? Now they become our backside jailbreak blockers. Okay, now we should, in a perfect world, you run this to the boundary because it's shorter to run. But we were trying to make something happen. We we're facing a really good team, um, trying to make something happen. But these three linemen, the guys who block down in traditional counter, now become your blockers. Now it's just too far to run. If you run that to the boundary, you're faking counter up front and throwing your backside jailbreak. So I like the idea of putting that backside jailbreak on whatever you like doing. Okay, you can put the backside jailbreak on a run. You can put the backside jailbreak on um, a nail screen. All those things. You can put them all together. So we completed that one. But it's, it's, it's not great. Like I said, you run it to the boundary. I wish number 12 would keep on running. If he keeps running and my number 79 seals the backside like he's supposed to, like, 79 is supposed to be right here, still in number five. You know, the center's supposed to pull flat. He takes care of that. And here's my guard. If we block all that up like we're supposed to and we keep running, there's nothing there. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we just didn't run it great this year. It's a new concept for these kids. Um, so, they were trying to pick it up. But um, here's one here. So, we got the now screen to the right. It's covered. Don't like it. There's the backside jailbreak. And it could be better, but as far as that explosive where you've run bubble after bubble after bubble, and now they're keying those guys, you got the backside jailbreak. And what I like is, so on this one, I didn't run the bubble. I ran the now screen to the outside receiver. So it was like a one-step quick hitch to the outside guy, and it's always a backside jailbreak. So that backside jailbreak is always there, no matter who of the three guys over there run the screen. And you can do it out of two-by-two two as well. All right. <clears throat> Let's see here. So this is what I was talking about. We ran it to, ran the now screen to the outside guy because we thought that was our best chance. And the quarterback, uh, the corner's probably pressed here. Yep. So we didn't like it, so there's the backside jailbreak. Um, now we should have ran it better, should have released better. We didn't block like we're supposed to by the right tackle. But like I said, you're dealing with a team that's learning and trying to do things new. Um, and let me just see if I have. I might have the old film of it real quick. It was a terrible view of it, but and they didn't record it right. I'll have to send it to you, but. Uh, last year, Northern Nash State Championship um, play. It was the second play of the game for us. And I know that the film is not great, but we were running. Um, it's probably the best way we ran it all year. So we're running trips over here, running late. Here's the bubble guy right here, number one. He ran the bubble. 
All right, so that's wide open, but we wanted a big hitter at, as like the first play. So I called backside jailbreak, and it's the exact same thing that you just saw. Um, it's the same concept. You know, the three linemen are releasing this way. Here's the, the boundary. So we call backside jailbreak, and he, the wide receiver breaks it. Like I said, terrible film, but um, I'll have to get you a good copy of that one. But um, that's one way it really worked and looked really good. I don't think I have – I don't have all my old stuff labeled like I should. It just, it just jumped out at me. I, I've never done it to the single guy before, and it yeah, yeah, yeah. looks really good. Like, there's – that could be really nasty. Yeah, it is. It's really good stuff. And, and for your quarterback, um, not I teach it that if the quick screen is covered, like if they're a man, you have to throw the backside jumper. Mm. And it's going to be perfect. Um, so I, that's all I tell my quarterback. We package our quick screen and our slow screen together always. Mm. So that way there's always a double go for our quarterback. Okay, can I throw it now? Yes. Okay, I'm good. If I can't, I have to fake it, backside jailbreak. And that's one of those things you just gotta time it up. If you got a really good receiver who can run a backside jailbreak, it's beautiful. Yeah, no, beautiful. I'm, I'm I'm sold on it. I just I just wanted to see a little tape on it. All right, let's talk about your course, man. You just yeah. put it out what a uh, a month ago, a couple weeks ago, a couple weeks, yeah, a couple weeks. And it is called Power. <laughs> I'm looking for it. Power, Power rate. rate offense. Yeah, it's just, it's just air rate. It's almost what we called it. It's like a. You know, when Lincoln went to, um, so I, it started, you know, I worked with Lincoln at ECU. I was an equipment guy, but, you know, he was the offense coordinator, and you watch that air raid every day. And, you know, when he was at ECU, he didn't really run anything powered downhill that much. As soon as he gets to Oklahoma, oh, here's the counter, here's this, here's power. And it's like, oh, wow, that's totally different, but it's the air raid. I'm like, I'm seeing exactly what we used to do. And then it just kind of progressed from there and um, um, learned it at Rose, and then we just kind of coined the term. It was like, oh. Well, we're going to mix our power run game with our air raid passes. And, you know, you start drawing stuff up and you start building it. And all before you know it, you have an entire playbook of stuff that you can call. And it's just it's just power rate. So you got that power downhill run game mixed with the air raid pass. And almost straight Lincoln Riley stuff. Uh, so it, the, the course is 65 bucks. It's called pair, uh, Power Raid Offense. Uh, tell them, tell them what they get in, in, the in the, in the package. All right. So, you know how most guys just give you, um, a couple of plays here, a couple of plays there, and, and they show you the film. Like the way I wanted to do it was here's everything I've ever done. You know, here's our 10 run game concepts. All right. We got inside zone. We got split inside zone. We got inside zone insert inside zone arc, four different ways to run inside zone. We got mid zone. You have counter all the different ways to run counter. So the way I run it, you have the old school method which is down, 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 kick, pull, and you have the new school method. And it talks about how you mix it together. So how do you run new counter with the loop and all this other stuff, mix it all together. So you have all these different run plays. You have all these different quick game, all these different drop back passes. Um, so you have over five hours of content, me teaching it, going through it, drawing everything up the way I do it, um, why I do it the way I do it, how you blend stuff together. And so instead of just giving you something, it's like, here's everything I've ever done. Pick what you like. Pick what fits your athletes, and this is how you put it all together. So um, pick whatever three runs you like, whatever three quick game, whatever three drop back. Here's the screen package, and build your own offense. So just don't take what I run, but here's how you use all of it and build it. And talk about the play sheets. You got it all on Yeah, play. so uh, every play I have a play sheet, um, like inside zone or counter's perfect. So counter has rules. You know, if you have a zero technique or a one technique or three or four, there's rules. And it has all the rules, uh, just like you would get in college. You know, the, the OC passes out the play sheet. Here's all the rules. And you sit down in your meetings. All you have to do is download and print it off. And I've given you all the play sheets that you can want. So you got play sheets. You got film. Um, anything you could want, uh, I put it all up there. Awesome, man. Uh, uh, we're going to have the link in the uh, description uh, below the video uh 65 bucks five hours of content all the play sheets and uh and i i like the idea that you're 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 not just telling them what which is not what i always do is here's what i'm doing right. but you're, you're giving them uh here's a whole menu you pick you pick what you want and you create your own offense and it's all lincoln riley inspired and uh oh, yeah. and obviously had huge success uh uh at your other stops and and very quickly going to have huge success there at Aiden Griffin, 
And buddy, I appreciate you coming on and sharing with us. And uh, and I can't wait to see how quickly you get the, that bunch turned around. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, 300 percent improvement the very first year. That, yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty dang good. You said you almost had two more. Yeah, I mean, almost had two more right there. We lost one uh, against the rival. It's thirty six to thirty. Had another one. We just let it slip away. It's just it was just um not being familiar with those high pressure situations. That's all it was. You know, you just got to learn. You just got to get in there and get experience. You know, um, so I'm with a great head coach who coached me in high school. His name's Paul Cornwell. He's, he's a legend. You know, he came back and he said, I'm coming back to coach and don't you want to be my OC? I was like, of course. I mean, <laughs> you were my coach. You've never let anybody else call an offense before except for you. And he's a wing T guy. And all of a sudden he was like, no, I want to throw it. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure? He's like, absolutely. So we went out this year and just with new kids who never played before, we broke, you know, passing touchdown record, the, Passing yards in a game, we threw for 302 in one game. And they're like, we've had years we've never thrown for 300 yards in a season. <laughs> and so he's like, no, it's awesome. It's exactly what we want. So just uh, we'll get there. It's just going to take time. But working with a great head coach and a great staff, and, and they're awesome. So um, it's fun. It's going to be fun. Well, awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. And, uh, again, I can't wait to see how quickly you get it turned around there. Uh, and uh, – and, We'll uh, we'll have the link in the description so guys can uh, can order the Coach Stoop course. I know you put a lot of time and effort into it. You were kind of texting back and went and forth with me on it, so I I know it's an endeavor of love, and you got a lot of good stuff in there. So appreciate you being here, brother. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, as always. Thank you, man. Uh, let me see what I'm doing here. I think I stopped it.